Joining me now is James Hardiman, leisure analyst at Citigroup. James, thank you so much for being with us. I'm still fascinated by this idea that inflation is good for the cruise lines. Play that out for us. Yeah, sure. And, and thanks for having me, Deidre. So um, we've done a lot of work in, in, to try to get at this idea of affordability, right? There, there aren't a whole lot of products in consumer world that aren't up dramatically in terms of, of what we ultimately have to pay for them. Cruise industry is very different from that. They essentially sat out this multi-year unprecedented run of inflation. And so the average cruise ticket by our estimates um, is only up maybe 5% um, versus 2019. Um, you add on airfare costs and you're probably looking about at about 7% growth. Um, whereas the average cruise customer's discretionary income is up call it low double digits uh, in that time. And so it's one of the few sectors that we've seen become even more affordable. Um, and certainly if you compare that to other you know, uses yeah. of, of those discretionary dollars, um, it's even all the more attractive. Um, most notably, um, the cruise companies talk about this idea that prior to the pandemic, uh, a cruise vacation was call it a 20 to 30% discount uh, to a comparable land-based right. location. But, that number's more like 40 to 50% today. So what, um, is, what does that say yeah. about the industry as a whole, though, right? I mean, do they not have very much pricing power? Is that what has led to these sort of ugly balance sheets, which you predict are going to be less ugly in the years to come? <laughs> are they able to improve on that side, their pricing power, even, you know, as consumers see inflation affect their income in a positive yeah, way? I, I think um, I think less ugly is right. Um, I, I think a lot of this just stems from the fact that they they weren't an industry, right? The the, the ships were in layup mode um, yeah. for more than a year, um, and and even last year, as we we sort of reopened this industry, it, it took a while. There were a number of false starts. It takes a lot to to sort of reengage this whole marketing engine, uh, and so as you're trying to fill up these ships, right, thousands of rooms on a ship. There's a lot of downward uh, pricing pressure associated okay. with that. Um, I think all three of these companies really over the next month or two, sometime in the summer, will be back to, to pre-pandemic occupancy levels. Mm. And then I think we can begin to see uh, the cruise yeah. industry participate in some of the pricing that we've seen across consumer. But that's a big question, right? Because we don't know what the economy is going to do a few months out. Some folks are still predicting yeah. a recession, debating how deep that's going to be. We just had an economist on at the start of the show who said that this is the last gasp for consumers. They've been fueled by credit card debt. How recession proof is the cruise industry? Well, historically, not very. Um, and certainly these are these are highly levered companies and and you know, there's a there's a so a whole lot of uh, risk perception there. But uh, you know, the point I make is that a recession, if that's all we're dealing with, all in quotes, is actually an improvement um, from where we've been in the cruise industry the last few years. Obviously, <laughs> you know, these companies can fall short of expectation, yeah. but you know, the, the, it's the one sector that I can confidently say. 23 is going to be better than 22, and 24 is going to be better than 23, recession or no. Yeah, which, um, which is remarkable. Good, tells, you, tells you how much pressure exactly the cruise industry has been under. But you don't think, yeah. I mean, these are huge gains this year. You don't think that's all baked in now? I think a lot of it's baked in. Um, I think, uh, you know, we just raised our price target, and I could, you know, I could see more upside even to our numbers. Uh, I think there's another 15 to 30% upside in, in Carnival. It's not all going to happen overnight. Um, as excited as we were about the, the second quarter print, um, expectations have certainly run in, in the last month or so. Um, you, you pointed out the, the 40 percent increase in, in the past month. Yeah. Um, and so expectations are high for Monday. I'm actually more excited about Tuesday when they're going to host an analyst day and not only walk right. us through sort of the hopefully walk us through the longer term mm -hmm. opportunity. Um, but really the deleverage story, you talked about the balance sheets. I think there's an opportunity for those to get, as, as you put it, less ugly. Less ugly. Well, I do know more people than I have in the past few years booking cruise, as you say, James. Uh, thanks so much for being with us today.